Hello, and welcome to SoberCast, where we provide AA speaker meetings and workshops in podcast format. We're an ad-free podcast, and if you enjoy listening, please help us be self-supporting by visiting SoberCast.com, look for the donate link, and drop a dollar or two into our virtual basket. We hope you enjoy the podcast. Have a great day. My name's Steve. I'm an alcoholic. And, uh, yeah, thanks for all the free shares. And uh, I just could never control my amount of alcohol in any way, shape, or form. Do you know what I mean? It doesn't matter what I try. I remember, I'm going to tell you a little story, right? It's, I, I get married. I move from Plymouth. You know what I mean? I'm like 20 years old. I moved to Hampshire and uh, I got myself a job in a building firm. And uh, you know, it's just a few years later. Do you know what I mean? I'm married. I've got a nice house, the kids. You know what I mean? Everything's going well. You know, I remember a Christmas come and uh, I said to my missus, they're having a Christmas do. It's about 50 miles away down in Trowbridge. Do you know what I mean? I'll, I'm going to drive. I'm going to drive there. I'm going to have a shandy or maybe a Coke and I'll be back within an hour. Maybe two, you know what I mean? So I get in this little burgundy beat up Ford Fiesta and I drive to Trowbridge. I meet them all in this, this thatched pub, do you know what I mean? And they're, and they're, they're local lads, do you know what I mean? They're, and they're, they're having a few drinks, you know what I mean? And I've and I, and I deeply no inside, do you know what I mean? She'd be waiting for me. I'm just going to have a pint of Coke and I'm going to go back within an hour, maybe two, you know? And uh, within two hours, I was on my fourth pint. Within four hours, I was with them all in a nightclub in Trowbridge, naked. I lost my shoes in one toilet, and it was a women's, do you know what I mean? And I come out, and I find myself around this house taking substances which I normally never touch, do you know what I mean? By then, I realised I was lost, do you know what I mean? I, I'd lost them all in a crowd. I don't know what happened, you know. I, somehow, I found myself back at this pub sleeping on the back seat of this beat-up Ford Fiesta with an AA blanket wrapped over me. Do you know what I mean? It was about minus 10, and the, and the frost was hanging off the windscreen. Do you know what I mean? The, and I woke up, the sun was rising, I was shaking, do you know what I mean? And I thought, I've done it again. Do you know what I mean? I've done it again. There's no, I've, I've no, I've, I've put no defence against me drinking, do you know what I mean? I've not thought about my missus at home with the kids, do you know what I mean? I've just thought about myself. The root of my problem is I'm self-centered to the core. And I realize that today, do you know what I mean? And it's a thing I've got to work on on a daily basis. And that's just one story of a thousand, do you know what I mean? And, I, and it just carried on, do you know what I mean? And if you're new in Alcoholics Anonymous, alcoholism is a fatal, progressive, illness that never ever reverses do you know what i mean it says in the big book it's a great obsession for every abnormal drinker and maybe someday somehow be able to control his concept you know his alcoholism do you know what i mean and i can't do you know what i mean the illusion has to be smashed do you know what i mean and i went to aa meetings do you know what i mean i went to aa meetings in andover and i remember standing down the bottom of these stairs in the rain do you know what i mean this little river running past i could see the trout swimming and i and my missus has sent me there, basically. Do you know what I mean? She sent me there because my drinking just got worse, as I just explained. And I went up to this AA meeting, and I seen 40, maybe 30 people sat around in a circle. I seen a 12-step program, which I didn't really understand, and I truly didn't want to, you know? And I thought to myself, there's 50,000 people in Andover. I'm in the wrong place. Do you know what I mean? I, I ain't one of these people. And what I was trying to do was find my way out of my alcoholism. Do you know what I mean? People talked about drinking vodka and ended up homeless and in treatment centers and prison. Do you know what I mean? And I sat there and I thought, man, this isn't me. Like, you know? And this Scottish chap gave me a big book of Alcoholics Anonymous and he told me to read it, you know? And I took it home and uh, my missus took it off me and took it up her mother in law's, like, you know? And I had to get it back. Do you know what I mean? But anyway, hey, just seemed a disaster. Do you know what I mean? I, I went to a wedding function. And I was about three months off the drink, do you know what I mean? And I went there and it was like all my friends were around me. They had a dance floor of people just dancing away on it, do you know what I mean? And I was I had a face like a wet lettuce, do you know what I mean? I just did not want to go on this dance floor, do you know what I mean? I didn't want to join in. And I just sulked like a small schoolboy all the way through the evening, do you know what I mean? And it's like, I had stopped drinking, but I felt worse, do you know what I mean? I just could not think about anything but alcohol 
and I had to pay a price. You know what I mean? I come into this whole group of Alcoholics Anonymous, Road to Recovery. I'll come in here and I'll come off the streets of Motley Plains. You know what I mean? The wife had gone, the family had gone. Do you know what I mean? The dancing in nightclubs had gone. Do you know what I mean? Going to meetings and Andover had gone. Do you know what I mean? Nothing seemed to work for me. Do you know what I mean? I'll, I was doing 90 and 90 days, you know what I mean? I'll come here and I was going to meetings and it just wasn't doing nothing for me, do you know what I mean? I got progressively and dangerously more antisocial. Until one day, one day I was walking down through Motley with a beard and I didn't look good, do you know what I mean? I don't look good like I do today, do you know what I mean? I was, I, I felt, I could hear this, this bus just went past me and pulled into the stop, do you know what I mean? And the screech of the wheels and the brakes just, my head was just killing me, do you know what I mean? I can just, it was just like hell on earth, do you know what I mean? The gates of hell, it gone clang, do you know what I mean? It's like, shit, man, it's, it's just doing, I don't know what I'm doing, do you know what I mean? I'm just going around in circles and I've seen Gavin. <laughs> I've seen Gavin, right? And he come trotting up to me and he goes, Steve, he said, go on, he said, and be a dad to your kids. And I looked him in the eyes. And by that day and that present moment on God's earth, I just froze. And for one reason, I don't know what it was, I turned around. I walked off. I went into the Witherspoon pub where my mum and dad had drunk for many a year. They got a taxi. We went home. I had a shower, a shave. A new set of clothes, and I started coming to AA meetings. Do you know what I mean, I've come into this home group. I asked Dave K to take me through the 12 step program of Alcoholics Anonymous, and I thank him dearly for that. And it just transformed. Do you know what I mean? I've done the suggestions, getting on my knees, asking God for a sober day, going to other meetings, carrying the message of the 12 step program. And that was over 10 years ago. Do you know what I mean? I'm just over 10 years sober. Do you know what I mean? And that's a miracle for an alcoholic like me. Do you know what I mean? I had Leroy chasing me down the lanes when I was eating out of dustbin. Do you know what I mean? Going, you're a loser. I even went around Leroy's house and we read the big book about the spiritual awakening and he turned his back on me and I had shot up the road to a pub. He come in, tapped me on the shoulder and he said, what are you doing, Steve? I'm having a point. Do you know what I mean? Insane. Do you know what I mean? But when I come back in the way, hey, I knew deep down that I was going to die of this disease. Do you know what I mean? I had no life left in me. Do you know what I mean? The flame had died to a stump. Do you know what I mean? It was like, and Dave K took me through the 12 step program. And I'll tell you now, step three, what a thing. Do you know what I mean? That feeling that I had just given my life over to God and I could be free of that feeling. Do you know what I mean? That change. Do you know what I mean? God was my. Agent, do you know what I mean? He, he, he was my leader. Do you know what I mean? It's like God, for me, at that moment in time, I was just his child. Do you know what I mean? And, and we'd done that step three prayer and we left that church. Do you know what I mean? And we got on to the rest of the steps. Do you know what I mean? And it's like, it's very rarely in a day I don't think about a chapter in the big book when I'm at work. Do you know what I mean? I, I do my suggestions, but quite often it didn't work. Do you know what I mean? I can just, I'm just rereading it in my head. Do you know what I mean? It's like, I'm really reading when. Bill sat at the kitchen table, do you know what I mean, with his friend who's got religion, do you know what I mean, and he, he's going to slide the bottle over and he's going to drink, and he said, well, if he don't, I've got, I've got more for myself, do you know what I mean, and this man had been taken from the scrap heap of life to a level of living that's got more wonderful as time passes, do you know what I mean, and that's what it's done for me, do you know what I mean, I've got nothing in any way, shape or form to moan about because of AA, do you know what I mean, it's given me a life where I have to pinch myself. Do you know what I mean? I, I, I do. I do hobbies that I truly love. Do you know what I mean? I've got a missus that I truly love. Do you know what I mean? I've got parents that I truly love. Do you know what I mean? It's like my heart's beating with honesty inside. Do you know what I mean? AA has transformed me from a chronic park bench drunk to a person that can all just, just live a normal life, do you know what I mean? I can walk through Motley and I can just be a free man, do you know what I mean? God give me the ability to be a free man through the 12 step program. If you're new in AA and you ain't taking the 12 steps and you ain't doing it and you ain't get a big book, you might as well go on, do you know what I mean? Because you need a sponsor, do you know what I mean? You've got to take the 12 step program seriously, do you know what I mean? This is like, what else is there, do you know what I mean? It's, I, I just can't see any other way out of my alcoholism. 
you know what I mean? It doesn't matter if I was chained to the radiator at home, do you know what I mean? With bodyguards outside, I'll rip it off the wall and get a drink, do you know what I mean? The day I don't think about alcohol at all, do you know what I mean? I ain't thought, thought about alcohol for over 10 years. I have a right laugh, do you know what I mean? I have a right laugh at work, do you know what I mean? I'm, I'm quite respected because of my alcoholism in work, do you know what I mean? I went up there to get a job a few years ago in a job in Salt Ash, and uh, I said to me, I said, look, I'm a recovering alcoholic. He said, bloody bargain. <laughs> he said, well, that's a good thing, he said, because at least you won't turn up piss on a Monday morning, do you know what I mean? At least you won't crash the van, at least you won't upset the clients, do you know what I mean? And I share the good news. I'm not frightened of sharing the good news wherever I may be. Do you know what I mean? There's been occasions when I've been working on people's jobs and I've shared the message of Alcoholics Anonymous. I was working in Tour Point once and this woman came up to me and we, we were working in her house, do you know what I mean? And uh, she said to me, I think my boyfriend's got a drink problem. She said he keeps going out the back door onto that shed every five minutes. And I just didn't say a word. Do you know what I mean? I was quiet as a mouse. Two days later, I voiced my opinion around what he was doing, do you know what I mean? And I said, listen, I'm a recovering alcoholic, right? I used to do exactly what he's doing, and I can tell you now, it's going to end up in disaster. I give him a pamphlet, do you know what I mean? And he's just ripped it up in front of me, do you know what I mean? But I was trying to carry a message, do you know what I mean? Whatever he does, he does, do you know what I mean? But he just wouldn't pay the price that we paid in AA, do you know what I mean? The 12-step program, the spiritual awakening, it's something I've got to live for the rest of my life. Do you know what I mean? The blood flows through my veins because of alcoholics and ominous. Do you know what I mean? And I don't say that lightly because I had three months to live when I turned up here. I was 38, maybe 39 years old. And last week or two weeks prior to that, I was 50. Do you know what I mean? And I can't believe it. Do you know what I mean? I remember standing up this podium. I was... 39 years old. No, I, 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 come, I was 40. I was 40 years old. And uh, someone said to me, life begins at 40, Steve. And I was chuffed a bit, do you know what I mean? <laughs> I was like, chuffed a bit. So I've been sober a short period of time. And my life started at 40. 10 years later, my life is still revolving like a big mill wheel at 50. Do you know what I mean? I don't shy away from this program. Do you know what I mean? The daily suggestions that's been given to me I do. Do you know what I mean? Sometimes a bit flimsy, sometimes as strong as the Eiffel Tower. Do you know what I mean? But I still do them. Do you know what I mean? Because for me, this is where my bread is buttered. And I've seen my family just flourish. Do you know what I mean? And making amends. It talks about that in step eight and nine. Do you know making amends to the ones we've harmed, like, you know? And that was hard, man. Do you know what I mean? I had to go up to Hampshire and, uh, Make amends. I remember going up to the me, me mother-in-law, father-in-law's at this time. You know, what I mean, the, the missus didn't want to know me. Don't blame her. But anyway, I'm up there and I'm, I'm up in their toilet. You know what I mean, and I phones me sponsor, and I said, Dave, Dave. I said, I've got to make amends to my ex-wife who's downstairs, her mother's downstairs, her father's downstairs, her sister and brother. And I'm thinking, well, where do I start? Do you know what I mean? Now that's why I need a sponsor. I said, Steve. Take your ex-wife to a quiet room and make your amends. Do you know what I mean? And I did. And one by one, they come in separately, one at a time. Do you know what I mean? And it didn't go bad. Do you know what I mean? They didn't hate me. They were worried about me. Do you know what I mean? They knew I had an illness when I didn't. Do you know what I mean? The family can see it before we do. Do you know what I mean? They can see it a mile away that we're suffering from alcoholism. If I've got chicken pox, I can see it because I've got spots all around my arms. Do you know what I mean? When I've got alcoholism, it's an inside thing. Do you know what I mean? I can't see it, but other people can. And uh, and I just continue with this. Do you know what I mean? It, I, I was driving over the old Tamar Bridge earlier, and it, it's hammering down. Do you know what I mean? The, the, the trees are flying from left to right, and it's pissing down. And I'm driving over the old Tamar Bridge, and I've just left my fiance in the little bungalow in Pillerton, and I've been with her for nearly nine years. Do you know what I mean? And it's like, what a loving, kind woman. You know what I mean? What a loving, kind woman. What a lucky man I am to have her. Do you know what I mean? Unbelievable. And it's all because of this program. Do you know what I mean? And just keep doing it. Do you know what I mean? I've just got to, I've got to go to work every day. Do you know what I mean? I've still got to do that. So this is like 
work that keeps me alive. You know I mean, it's the entity, the spiritual entity of the fellowship of the sunlight and the spirit. I ain't a religious man, I tell you. Do you know what I mean? But I'll tell you what, a spiritual awakening to me is being in a purpose place at a present moment in time where I can feel the hand of God brush me across the back of my head. Do you know what I mean? And it sends huge pimples up my skin. That me is a change of thought and attitude from an alcoholic who's in a park drinking special brew with other alcoholics in a squat in Devonport with other alcoholics, you know what I mean? To be at peace and serenity with the world that God's given me. Do you know what I mean? That's it. Do you know what I mean? It's like, what more can I ask for? Do you know what I mean? To wake up with a bed and a quilt and a pillow under my head, not a cardboard box and another alcoholic addict like myself in the car park down Muttley Plain with an old dirty, pissy mattress underneath my sodden body. You know what I mean? To wake up where I can get on my knees, do my suggestion, read my gist with a day card, go and have my cup of coffee, clean my teeth, get my work clothes on, get in my work van that my boss has trusted with me with for three and a half years, you know what I mean? Give me the keys to the factory that we work from, you know what I mean? The unit that stores thousands of pounds worth of materials. I can go off to a customer's house and I can say good morning to them and they've got a smile on their face, you know what I mean? They're happy with the work I've done. Sometimes if I'm really lucky, they give me a bonus, you know what I mean? The boss is content. That's insane for an alcoholic like me that would used to go into Motley Plain co-op with a dirty old bag which I found on a wall down Alexander Road with bricks in it. I took them out. I got this bag and I shoved it over my shoulder. I remember it was like they used to laugh at me, the other alcoholics I drink with. Do you know what I mean? They go, go on, Steve. You know you're good at it. And, and I would stagger into the co-op with this blue bag and I'd bend down and I'd get the crate of Stella and I'd slide it in, a couple of bottles of wine and I'd put it over my shoulder and I'd walk to the newspaper aisle and I'd pretend I was guiding through the evening hour, do you know what I mean? And I'd walk out and they go, you winner, Steve. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Then we would sit in the park, drink these cans of ale and lager and wine and we would talk absolute nonsense, do you know what I mean? The chap next to me, Phil, I remember him, he was, he was a plasterer, and I'm a brickie, do you know what I mean? And we were sat there drinking, and we are looking at the kids and the families going to work, and the businessmen with their suitcases, and he would go, do you reckon we should start our own business, Steve? <laughs> and I'm thinking, we ain't got a car, I've got no tools, do you know what I mean? I've, I've got nothing, and I go, it ain't a bad idea, Phil. <laughs> you know what I mean? Insane. Do you know what I mean? Alcoholism will pull me around like a pit bull dragging an old tatty doll. Do you know what I mean? It's going to rip me apart. Do you know what I mean? And this 12-step program has given me direction and purpose for over 10 years. Do you know what I mean? And I didn't think I was going to get it. Do you know what I mean? And there's people in here that didn't think I was going to get it. Do you know what I mean? It's the truth. Do you know what I mean? But I got a man who was armed with the facts. He was no nonsense. Show me. I rang him every night. I know he asked tonight. My old man used to say, don't think it's your phone response is turning. And I'm going, hang on, Dad, I've got a couple of minutes yet. Do you know what I mean? But I ring him. Do you know what I mean? And we went through it. And I've got a lovely relationship with that man. Do you know what I mean? He's a kind, considerate, 27, nearly year sober alcoholic. Do you know what I mean? And uh, just carrying the message to the alcoholic who suffers. I mean, the, the alcoholic who still suffers. There's loads of them on Zoom. Do you know what I mean? I was in America last night. There's people suffering in America. And, uh, and I'll just carry this message that's been given to me. Do you know what I mean? The allergic reaction I have to alcohol. Do you know what I mean? The physical allergy I have to alcohol. The mental obsession I have to alcohol. The mental obsession I have to alcohol when I ain't drinking alcohol. Do you know what I mean? The mental obsession I have when I am drinking alcohol that I need more. And when you put all that in a basket and you leave it to just flow down a river, do you know what I mean, for the 12-step program, it disappears. Do you know what I mean? But like an old film, do you know what I mean? If you, it's, it's like watching a film, do you know what I mean? You, you watch a film from the beginning to the end 
and you're, and you're thinking about that film for a few days. Do you know what I mean? It's like, it's, it's, you remember all the characters in it. Do you know what I mean? It's sharp as a radar. Do you know what I mean? You remember them all. You remember the beginning right to the end. What a brilliant film. Do you know what I mean? I remember it. Yeah, brilliant. Like, you know? Now, you asked me about that film six months later. I can't remember the start. I can't remember the end. Do you know what I mean? I can't remember the characters, anything about it. That's why we do the daily suggestions in Alcoholics Anonymous. Do you know what I mean? Because we're good forgetters. Do you know what I mean? I forget or I don't want to carry it around with me. Don't get me wrong. When I go around Plymouth now, I don't think about where I was. Do you know what I mean? The 12 step program of suggestions just keeps me tapped into a Alcoholics Anonymous. I mean, it's like, it just gives me a way of life that I shouldn't really have. And it's, and it's bloody simple, really. Do you know what I mean? It's so simple. I missed it with such a small degree that I nearly paid the price, you know? And um, just the way I think and feel, do you know what I mean? It's like, I'm a bit of a metal detectorist, right? I've got to say that, like, you know, that's, that's my hobby, do you know what I mean? And, and, and I've, I've, I've travelled all around the country, do you know what I mean? I've travelled all around the country to, to, to places. I've been to Glastonbury, tour on the hills, you know what I mean? The people find of Roman coins and they'll find a few myself, do you know what I mean? And it's like, and, I, and I'm treading toes with these people, do you know what I mean? Side by side. And we're having a chat and we're off detecting the camera, do you know what I mean? And, and it's like, I shouldn't even flame and be there. Do you know what I mean? I should not even be detecting, do you know what I mean? I should be down six foot somewhere, but I ain't, do you know what I mean? And it's not a miracle. It's because I've given myself, my whole self to Alcoholics Anonymous, you know? 100%. I know what I am. Do you know what I mean? I know what I need to do. I'm quite a reserved, quiet sort of person. I'm not the greatest mixer in the world, do you know what I mean? But I just, I just was always that way, do you know what I mean? But when I speak to you about alcoholism, I'm shooting it direct, do you know what I mean? I, I've got that bow and arrow and I'm shooting it straight in the bullseye, do you know what I mean? If you don't take the 12-step program, if you haven't got a sponsor, if you ain't going to go through the 12-step program, if you're an alcoholic like me, you're going to pay the price. Do you know what I mean? If you get a sponsor and you go through the 12-step program, you'll have a life beyond your wildest dreams. And, and, and they, they, you know, we argue with that in our heads. Do you know what I mean? You know, I'd rather drink myself to death or go into AA and find a spiritual way of life that's going to save my life. But no pills, nothing. Do you know what I mean? There's, I haven't got to do anything except for this program. And people won't do it. You know what I mean? That man in Tall Point won't do it. You know what I mean? And I'm glad I did. And uh, what have I got? I've got two minutes, right? <laughs> two minutes. And um, anyway, you, you know, it's like, I would like to thank the home group. Do you know what I mean? I'd like to thank my home group for being warm and welcoming to me when I turned up here again. Do you know what I mean? No one give up on me. Do you know what I mean? No one shoots a wound in the air. Do you know what I mean? They didn't say, well, get out, Steve, you're a waster. Do you know what I mean? They just welcomed me back in. Do you know what I mean? They gave me a cup of tea. I sat down. I identified with people that like I did before, but to a degree where I knew I meant business. And I worked this program with all my heart. Like, you know? And uh, I'm a bit of a sop when it comes to sharing. Do you know what I mean? I, I get a bit sentimental. Do you know what I mean? But that's the way it is. Do you know what I mean? This, this is like, if I go on tonight and uh, my missus would uh, be well happy to see me. Do you know what I mean? She'd, see, she'd be well happy to see me. When I left her earlier, she said, you don't have to look handsome in that seat, Steve. Do you know what I mean? And she said, good luck. Do you know what I mean? She said, I look forward to seeing you when you get back. Who's going to do that for me on Motley Plains? Do you know what I mean? Sat with a cardboard box wrapped around my heroes. Do you know what I mean? They ain't going to give me that welcome, are they? Do you know what I mean? They're just going to walk by me and go, Actually, they used to. Do you know what I mean? They used to walk by me and look at me with pity. The day I got restless and irritable and discontent around the 12-step program, when I come in here and I meant business, my life just rocketed. And uh, I'm so privileged and I'm so grateful to be asked to share on my 10th anniversary of the Road to Recovery Group of Alcoholics Anonymous, you know. 
I remember John there, he used to look at me and he used to think, he ain't going to get it, this boy. Do you know what I mean? He ain't going to get it. Do you know what I mean? I remember, how long have I got now? Half a minute. I remember John, I used to go to John and he'd go, have you been drinking today then, Steve? And I'd go, no. <laughs> no. And he'd go, you sure, Steve? I'd go, I was stinking of it. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I was stinking of it. I thought I was a winner. As Leroy says, I was a loser. <laughs> Yeah, um, hi everyone, I'm Matt, I'm an alcoholic, and uh, yeah, it's really great to be here tonight, and um, thanks for the first three speakers, that was awesome, and um, it's good to see people like Leroy and Ryan back in the, the meetings at the moment, and uh, please just stay, because this is where you belong, this is where I belong as well, now, I'm a hopeless alcoholic, this is where I belong, and this is where I'm going to stay by the, you know, God willing, and um yeah, I mean, the amazing fact is I'm a hopeless alcoholic and I've just, you know, at the start of the month, I just turned um, 10 years sober. Um, that's, I mean, that's, no, and that, that, I mean, that is, um, and to be honest, I haven't had time. Um, I'm so busy. The last few weeks have been really stressful. My dad's been in hospital and I've been looking after him every spare second I've had from, from the day job. And um, I haven't had time to sort of celebrate. Um, but just on the way here in the car, I was listening to some music. I just had time to reflect, you know, really, it, it, that's, I mean, being sober for 10 years is not down to me anyway. It's not my achievement. Um, sorry, there's something on the screen. Um, it, you know, it's not, I, that's, I can't stay sober for 10, I couldn't stay sober for 10 minutes before I got to AA. The only reason I'm sober today is... You know, by the grace of God and being willing to, um, you know, get a sponsor and listen to them, do what they say, um, go through the 12 steps, keep practicing the principles I've learned in that, get into service in Alcoholics Anonymous, um, at my home group and help out, help other alcoholics, and then try and take these, um, you know, what we do here out into the real world. And, and and try and make a go of it, which I failed to miserably many times before. So, you know, it, I say it's not really a celebration, but it's an incredible milestone to me. But it just tells you the power of this program, the 12 Steps of Alcoholics Anonymous. You know, a lot of us say, you know, if it can sort me out, it will sort you out. And um, it's it's worked beautifully for me. You know, um, I cannot believe, like I said, I, can't, I couldn't stay sober for 10 minutes. Uh, and yet, you know, being sober for this length of time. And it's not just that, it's just, you know, um, somebody was on the phone to me this week and they were kind of, I've been sponsoring them, they were kind of having a bit of a moan about, oh, um, you know, they, they, it's a bit harsh, isn't it? Saying that if you, can, you if you don't do this, you'll drink and die, you know? And well, yeah, I mean, it's, it's in the big book and we've seen it happen at this meeting. Um, people I've actually sponsored of, of you know, have drunk themselves to death. So we're dealing with a, with a serious illness, a fatal progressive illness of alcoholism, serious business. Um, but rather, I mean, so that those, those are important facts of alcoholism. Um, but I mean, the most important fact is one of, it's in the big book, you know, the great fact for me, you know, is that, you know, um, you know the 12 steps, you know, and, and everything else. The great fact is that I've had a spiritual experience as a result of this program. A deep and effective spiritual experience has revolutionized my entire way of life, such that, you know, I'm not even, alcohol is not even on the horizon. It's not on the radar. You know, I'm not tempted to drink anymore. Um, I don't need to drink. I don't want to drink. I've lost interest in alcohol, as something Alexis says. You know, it just completely got wiped from my kind of, thinking uh, as soon as I made up my mind to go through this program and um, you know so if anyone's new out on Zoom especially you know what we're talking about in AA is is not just coming to meetings and trying to white knuckle it and stay off alcohol oh, I, must, you know, I mustn't drink today you know it's just, that's not it at all if you go through the 12 steps with the sponsor you know and you do it properly and you do it fearlessly and thoroughly you do it seriously and you, and you know you have to because you're gonna, you are going to die if you don't. You know, you really, life is on the line. Um, and you can have a wonderful life as this happened to me and it can happen for you as well. And, um, 
Yeah. So, I mean, we sometimes get like, it's not just new people. We sometimes get like family members, you know, join the Zoom meetings, especially during the last few months, you know, and some of them are sort of wondering why they're, you know, why they can't sort of change their partner or their husband or boyfriend or whatever it might be. And, and the simple fact is, you know, we are dealing with a physical and mental illness over which we have no control. You know, many people do not understand, you know, that the alcoholic is a very sick person. And I can tell you, I was a very sick person. And um, and I didn't even know how sick I was. You know, somebody said it earlier. I mean, and, you know, I didn't know my, how much trouble I was in until by some somehow, by the grace of God, I got to AA just in time before it all went, you know. You know, I, it's incredible to me, really, how it's all worked out. I've literally escaped complete disaster. And I, wind, I wound up in AA just at the right time. It was all hanging by a thread. And I, and I did what everyone said here. I got a sponsor and I went through the 12 steps. And, um, you know, I didn't have to go down any further. I, I, you know, it's completely saved my life, um, transformed my life and the way I live as well. And, and uh, it's just, I mean, really, it's what I've always been looking for. And I found it here. So what, what's the problem with an alcoholic like me? You know, what, what, what is the problem? You know, and this might help anyone who's out there tonight who's new or, or, or um, maybe the family members on Zoom watching. Um, you know, basically, it's like Pip said, I, um, you know, the very first time I had an alcoholic drink, which um, a few of us had smuggled into a school disco, I got insanely drunk. And they had to, they, four, four um, men had to carry me out of there. You know, and I was about, what was I? I can't remember how old it was. It, it was absolutely insane. And that has been my experience with alcohol ever since. You know, every time I drank, I got insanely drunk. I couldn't control it. And um, it just set something off. And I would have more and more and more. And I'd just, um, uh, I'd hurt people or I'd hurt myself or embarrass myself. I'd say ridiculous things. Or, or you know, it was just... It was just, it was, wasn't good. And it was like that every time. And yet really, I mean, you know, that, that's the physical dimension. We call it an allergy to our cards in the big book. You know, I, I just cannot uh, control my drinking. And it says in the big book, no real alcoholic ever uh, recovers control. Um, so, you know, that's, that's pretty serious stuff. You know, what am I going to do about that? And um, the second part of the, the mental illness Despite what I've done, despite how embarrassing it is, and despite my partner kicking me out and saying, I, I don't want you anymore, um, you know, whether you get sober or not, I don't want you back because you've gone too far, um, I'll just do it again. And I don't really care. I, I just thought, oh, sod you lot. And um, you know, then, I, then, I'm, then I'm just drinking on my own in, in, in my flat or out on the moors in the car or whatever. You know, I'm the type of alcoholic, actually, that you know, I, I put myself in hospital on a cocktail of like pills and alcohol um, once. And, um, you know, when they let me out after a few days, after sort of, you know, getting me cleaned up, you know, the insanity of alcohol returned pretty quickly, the mental twist. I thought, well, you know, should I, should I go home to the partner and the kids? They're really, they're worried sick about me. No, I know what I'll do. I'll just, I've got to find my car. Where is it? Where's the car? You know, when the ambulance picked me up, I, don't, I can't remember where I've left it. I found it, went to the nearest place to buy some more booze, went to the went to Dartmoor and did it all over again. You know, that's the insanity of alcohol. And that's the mental illness that we're dealing with. So, you know, I'm, I'm caught between these two things. It's catch-22. You know, the physical allergy of alcohol is, 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 is there. And, I, and despite how, despite people telling me and despite promises, you know, I just can't leave it alone. And it's and you're really trapped in this um, just crazy world of alcoholism. And um, you know, eventually, I um, you know rang the AA helpline and my sponsor Chris, uh, thank you, Chris, and, and Welsh Nick back there. Um, you know, came out to my flat and just just talked to me, did enough to get me to my first meeting that night. And frankly, I just thought it was this 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 is really cheesy. What's going on here? You know, I mean. You know, they're talking about some stuff I just don't get. But really, once I started to listen properly after a couple of weeks and another relapse, I um, 
I thought, hmm, well, these guys, uh, these guys, you know, it all, it all fell into place. These guys are telling me the truth. There's no way I can recover on my own. And I tried my fair share of things like, um, you know, I tried, I tried the doctors, the counsellors, the medication, the therapy. Someone said it earlier. Um, go into um, CBT and all that stuff. And I tried all these things that it just didn't, I mean, it was hopeless, really. And um, so I knew at that point, and they were, they were kept sharing, you know, if you get a sponsor and take the 12 steps, you get a sponsor in a big book and take the 12 steps over and over again. And it was just wearing down my resistance. And um, thank God it did, because otherwise I would have overthought it, overanalyzed it, and I'd have been out there and I probably would be dead by now. That's the truth of it. And um, so thank God, you know, they talked about their, their problems, their illness, uh, but also thank God they talked about the solution that we've got here in the 12 steps. And um, I, uh, I just, so that, that Tuesday night down at Christ the King, I was sinking lower and lower and lower into my chair as they kept on going on about the big book and the 12 steps and getting the sponsor. And I just thought, oh no, I'm, I thought, right, I've got to do this. Yeah, there's no other way. I, I, I can't see any other way out of this stuff. So um, I just asked for a sponsor. Sean Kay was the secretary that night. And um, it, so I got this temporary sponsor. It turned out to be Chris, who 12 stepped me. Uh, and he's just been my sponsor ever since. You know? So, you know, I've had, so I've been at the same home group throughout my recovery. And I've had the same sponsor throughout my recovery. And I've just done the same things every day uh, as best I can. Not perfectly, like Andy said. You know, uh, just done the best best I can every day uh, to to follow what he says, uh, follow the actions that we take in Alcoholics Anonymous, and as a result, I've stayed sober all that time. And there's been no temptations to drink. You know, there's been no um, not, not even through difficult times or pressured or pressure at work or what you know. Um, there's been no temptation to drink. I've, I've really done this wholeheartedly with everything I've got because uh, that's the only way. And um, so, yeah, so I've got this sponsor and he showed me the daily plan and I, I thought it was ridiculous, it hurts, to be honest. Um, well, pray for a sober day. Well, you, you've got to be kidding me, right? I mean, you know, really, uh, so sort of, um, I just couldn't believe it. But I, for once, I didn't have anything to say about it. I, I always had a wisecrack or, or a comeback or a little, I'd always pipe up at the back of the class, you know, with some rubbish or, or joke or or some sort of uh, or criticism, uh, and for once, I um, I didn't have anything to say or to argue about. I just said, "Okay, I'll do it." You know, that's that's really what I, I was thinking. Some thinking something else, but I just said, "Okay, yeah, I'll do it," uh, and that was really important. You know, I was finally that. I think looking back now, that tell uh, you know that tells me that I was finally beaten. I had no. I, I couldn't, um, there was there was nothing I could do to dispute what I had, you know, to argue about what I had to do. Um, it had worked for you guys, you were telling me that, uh, and I couldn't believe some of your stories really, but, you know, now I've got to know you all better as, as, as those first few weeks went on. I knew it was true, it, it, it kept me going. Um, so, yeah, I got the sponsor and started taking the daily actions uh, pretty soon, I was into service, like sweeping the floor and whatnot at the meeting. And um, and I was going through the 12 steps, you know, at my sponsor's pace, not mine. You know, he knew how important it was to be, fe to be fearless and thorough. So I went through the 12 steps, you know, and I had step one. You know, I showed him that. I rang him every time, every day on time. And I still do that, you know, once a week now. If I'm, if I'm late, that's really, that's just bad for me. I just... My conscience is, is like, I cannot be one minute late, you know, ringing my sponsor. And, um, yes, yeah, so we're going through the steps and he explained what to read in the big book. Uh, and it all, I say, it all started falling into place. Like that thing Mark said at the start, you know, about the, the, it's sending like a shiver down your spine when I first read the doctor's opinion, some of the other parts of the big book. I really felt like that. I just couldn't believe it. It, it you know, where I, this, this had been my life. And, and yet here on the page, it was telling me, you know, what the problem was. But again, the, the beautiful thing about the big book is it also told me what the solution was. Um, so I, I didn't doubt what, what the big book was saying in the first four chapters about the problem. And therefore, 
you know, I had to accept that it, it would also be true that the solution in the 12 steps that it talks about in chapter five and onwards was going to be true as well. So, yeah, so I, you know, I'm going through the steps. You know, I took my inventory, uh, just the most incredible thing I've ever done. I mean, I, to be honest, I dragged it out. Don't do that if you're on step four. I did drag it out for a bit, but I know when I finished it, that I hadn't left a single thing out. Um, there's the big stuff, but also, you know, not forgetting, it says in the big book, you know, if we, we think if we're not running work in a program, you know, one day for some trivial reason, we'll get the hump and have a drink. So not forgetting that, you know, I put down everything, every, you know, everything, um, you know, the, the, the petty stuff, the embarrassing stuff, the creepy stuff, the perverted stuff, the stuff I felt guilty about and ashamed of, all of it, and um, all my fears and, um, you know, all the naughty stuff as well. And, um, and, and you know, I, I knew I had a, I knew when he came round for me to read that out um, in step five, I hadn't left a single thing out up to that point in my life, not a single thing, down to the tiniest, tiniest little irritation. I put it all down. And uh, to be honest, remember, that's, probably, that's probably what's worn Chris out, you know, for, for the last few years, is, is, is having to listen to that rubbish. But, um, you know, I, I knew I'd done it. And when, I, when I'd done, people talk about it here, it, it didn't happen straight away, actually. I did step five. It took a day and a bit more the next day to read it all out. And um, it was this time of year, actually. It was Christmas Eve, uh, uh, you know, back then. And um, but it was a few days later, I just had an incredible um, sense of peace. Like, I wasn't thinking about anything. You know, for years, all this stuff had going round and round my head. And, just, uh, and, and it, it, you know, like it says in the Bible, our problems just, well, they seem to increase. They pile up and, you know, on us, and they become just impossible to solve. And for, for, for the first time in my life, I had um, just the inc a most incredible clear head. And I knew that what they promised in the big book, that, that peace and serenity, um, you know, I knew they were telling the truth. You know, I kind of suspected they were, but I couldn't quite believe it. But then I experienced it for myself. So that's why we talk about the 12 steps, you know, the spiritual experience. It's not a spiritual, read it and... Um, you know, uh, just think that some, somehow you're going to get that. You have to go through the work to have that experience. And um, so, yeah, I, know I went on through the rest of the steps. I made my list of amends. Someone was talking about it earlier. Uh, of the people I'd hurt, and I'd hurt a lot of people. I, I was just shabby, really, a lot of the time. I was a bit of a git, and um, I, I was quite sort of callous and cold. Um, I think a lot of people don't think I've changed much, actually. But there is, um, but yeah, I was, I was, I was awful sometimes. And some of the things I did to people, and some of the things I lied about and dropped them in it at the same time. I mean, that was awful. And I had to make amends to all these people, so I went out and did all that. I paid back money that I filled at, at, at work through my expenses. Um, you know, I made amends to my family, and I was then allowed. You know, for for, for Months before that, my partner wouldn't let me you know, see my son. I was just so unreliable, and I was drink driving all the time. Anyway, I was dangerous. I was a danger to others and myself. And um, I made amends, and I was allowed to see my son again. Um, he's just turned twenty. It's, it's incredible, really. You know, you know, he sort of wished me well tonight as I came out the door. And um, you know, what what an amazing thing to have. Like, because I was just absent a lot of the time not just physically absent, out lying about where I was and doing up, up to no good. But I was, I was absent up here and in here, you know, I, I just couldn't be, uh, you know, like I had no empathy for the people around me. I had no, um, I just didn't have a connection to them. You know, really, I mean, if someone said, I mean, who said they were, I mean, people like have to self-isolate in the pandemic. I mean, I've been living in isolation for years, really. All through my alcoholism, I was living in isolation was the reality of it. Uh, I, I was um, you know, often sharing. I, I'd go into a room full of people that I knew, maybe at work. I just felt so lonely in that room. And I, I just couldn't seem to, like, I didn't know how to be with them. Um, so all this stuff started to disappear as I went through the 12 steps, you know, this sort of self-centeredness and all that. And, um, 
you know, all those defects of, of just, just stupidly, you know, uh, just stupid amounts of pride and ego that, that just, just ruled my life or just, well, what, what it did was scupper all the things that I wanted to do, really. And, um, yes, yeah, so I went through the steps. I made amends to the people around me that I hurt, and some of those still go on today. It's, you know, I can hardly square that account in my lifetime, you know, something in the big book that I believe in. Uh, and, you know, from that point forward, it was like, okay, we're now, now getting to the business of helping other alcoholics, you know, enlarge my spiritual life. And a large part of that for me is what it says in step 12, you know, um, it's kind of like, you know, so I've gone through the 12 steps, I'm, I'm recovered, thank you. And, you know, so what? That, 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 so I could kick back, and surely I've done it all now. No, 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 not at all. That's just the beginning. You know, what we, you know, in the step 12th step, we tried to carry this message to alcoholics and, you know, practice these principles in all our affairs. And that's quite, a, that's quite a tall order. And some people just don't want to make the effort to carry this, this thing on. But I know that what this has given me uh, and um, I'm full of gratitude for AA. Um, and I, it's a bit like those people you hear on the news. They're so grateful that, like, the operation saved their dad or whatever, or, you know, uh, and they throw themselves into, like, raising money for this, that, and the other. Uh, and really, it's the same feeling inside for me. I, I'm so grateful for what AA has done for me that I will, I literally give you know, everything back if I could. Uh, I'd just spend every minute trying to give back to AA. But that's not the real world. You know, I have to get, I got back into work. You know, I'm sort of on a new career at the moment as a, as a primary school uh, TA, uh, hopefully to be a teacher. Um, if that doesn't work out, I'm not worried. You know, I've been taught by this program that we just, we just follow a path. And then, you know, if that doesn't work out, we try something else. I mean, I'm just inspired by the people who've, some of them are in the room, actually, who've changed careers over, over the course of their lives, the course of their recovery. And that inspires me. I don't have to worry about it. I just try my best. And if it doesn't work out, I'll try something new. And, um, yeah, so, I mean, just to sum up, I've got the two-minute light about a minute ago. Um, so just to sum up, I mean, if anyone's new out there tonight, you know, trust what we're telling you. This is a serious illness. And if you identify with us, and if you can't control your drinking, then you're probably alcoholic. And if that's the case, you're suffering from an illness, a physical and mental illness, which only a spiritual experience will conquer. And that made me want to throw up when I first got here. But the reality is this has done for me what I could not do for myself. Um, I couldn't get sober on my own. I had no power to do so. I had to find a power greater than myself. That, that through, you know, this AA group is a power greater than me. And through it, I've been able to get sober, recover, have a much better life than the one I had before. I mean, that's an understatement. It's, it's miraculous. And not only that, it's led me to a way of living, which I know will solve all my problems as long as I keep doing it. And, um, uh, and just once again, thanks to my sponsor. Um, thanks to Nick over there. There's a lot of other people on my journey. There's probably everyone in this room pretty much tonight and everyone downstairs leave the mince pies alone down there i've counted them um and, and there's lots of other people out on zoom tonight who are in this group pretty much at some point in my recovery every single one of you has helped me in some way even if you don't realize it so thank you very much road to recovery it's been wonderful i intend to keep coming here and trying to help other people if you're new just get a sponsor here and, and just join us and you'll then you'll realize what we're talking about but you have to go through it to experience it, but it is a wonderful experience. Thanks. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed the podcast. Sobercast is ad free and we'd like your help in order to keep it that way. So if you'd like to help us be self-supporting by pledging a dollar to a month, visit sobercast.com and look for the donate links. Thank you very much.